We continue to preview the 2023 college football season. Our stop today is Ann Arbor, Michigan, and we get to visit with Joshua Schumacher, the head coach for the Concordia Cardinals in his seventh season with the program. Coach, thank you so much for taking time with us today first, and let's talk a little bit about 2022 to bring us into 2023. You come in on a three-game win streak, a record of 5-5 five and five on the season. I know not from a record perspective what you all had hoped for last season. Uh, take us from there to where we are right now. Yeah, we did not start the season the way we wanted to. We went down to uh, Stetson and uh, flew down and played where uh, they filmed the Water Boys. So it was pretty hot for us Michigan boys down that first week, and we, uh, you know, I think we lost by ten down there. So we played some uh, good teams early, and we came up short. Uh, and uh, as the season went on, we started to figure it out. We had an injury at quarterback, and. Um, Gavin's doing better and healthy coming into this season. And so kind of revamped our offense. And if you go through and look at the stats, we were definitely able to run the ball a lot better the second half of the season. And uh, it just took us a minute to figure out who we were as the season was going on. So um, offensively, but I'm excited, you know, coming off the three wins at the end of the season was a good finishing point after starting two and five. Uh, and our guys are certainly hungry. You know, they, we were coming off the two conference championships going into last season. And so these seniors, you know, that's what they experienced their freshman and sophomore year. And uh, we just spent a weekend down in West Virginia, whitewater rafting with those guys doing a mud obstacle course. And uh, there was a blob thing at the end in this water park where our guys were launching each other off this, uh, you know, like the movie Heavyweights. And so we had a lot of fun, a lot of good bonding time. So we're excited with these group of guys going in, into this season. Those team building trips can be a lot of fun. They really can. And and what goes in and, and what you take away from it also can be something that's a, a blessing throughout the year. Uh, Coach, uh, you were talking about the running game getting going as the season went along too. Brandon Stewart returns for you nearly 700 yards rushing, seven touchdowns for you as well, an all-conference performer. Yeah, uh, we're really excited about having uh, Stu back. Uh, he really – I think he ended up starting uh, – actually, what happened was Heath Flower, a guy that – he's a senior for us, but uh, he had worked so hard coming off an injury, scored the first touchdown of the season. He ended up uh, getting injured again in our game against Roosevelt. And then uh, Stu really kind of stepped up and uh, really kind of got, got after that year. Made a couple mistakes during the year that he learned from and matured through. Um, and then uh, James Carpenter, he, he was out a little bit in our last game, and James Carpenter, who's also going to be a senior for us, uh, he really stepped up in our last game, rushed for over 100 yards in that. So we're going to you know, have James and Stu back this year. And then another running back is Shondell, who's been – Shondell Hardnett, who's been working real hard this summer too. So we're definitely excited about the group of guys we have coming back at running back. You mentioned Gavin briefly, Gavin Brooks uh, last season, and he and Jalen Smith both saw time there, obviously because of injuries and and how you uh, put people in the proper places there. What does the quarterback position look like right now coming in? Yeah, for us, uh, Gavin Brooks and uh, actually Brad Solom are our top two guys. You know, Jalen Smith isn't coming back um, this season. Uh, but Brad and uh, Gavin have both been around working out this summer. We've had about – you know, in July, we had 58 guys working out with us here, and uh, they've been able to do quite a bit of throwing and connecting with receivers. So we're excited about those two guys competing for it. You know, Gavin was able to come in his freshman year and win the starting job after being the number two in camp and led us to uh, a co-conference championship. And so we're excited to get him, uh, you know, see him back on track and doing things. But Brad's got a heck of an arm and can run. And so he's definitely challenging those situations uh, at the quarterback position. So for us, we haven't really gone, I don't think, a season. I've been the head coach for seven years and been here at Concordia. This will be my 11th season. And um, I don't think we've ever gone a season with just one quarterback. You know, So we're always working to prep both guys and finding what both guys can do well. So. Coach, a name that that stood out uh, from an outsider's perspective because of what he was able to do in, in many different places, Seager to Gainer last year uh, did well, not only returning the ball, we'll talk about special teams a little bit more later, but uh, also led the way for you receiving yards uh, and uh, touchdowns as well. Talk about your receiving core. Yeah, we're really excited to have Seager back. He's a great leader, elite competitor, uh, you know, averaging, you know, he broke the NAI record. You know, it was, what, 44 yards on average per return. Like, that's just crazy that you're, you know, 
that you average that. So, you know, we had to be creative to find ways to keep getting him the ball because everyone would kick away from him. But those guys did a heck of a job blocking for him on the return. And Coach Straz, our safeties coach and special teams coordinator, he does a phenomenal job working with them. So uh, with the receivers, we're really excited about Seager coming back. Uh, we also have Jordan Garcia, who had transferred uh, from Siena Heights the year before, who had to sit out the entire um, last season because of the way our transfer rules work within conference. You can't – you're not immediately eligible. So we're excited about him. We also have Bailey Brooks coming back, um, who played some as a freshman, who's Gavin's younger brother. Uh, we have Harmon uh, DeVries, who's a six seven receiver, kind of changes the math a little bit with his height, uh, who's coming back as well. And we've got a good group of freshman receivers uh, that we uh, think will be able to kind of impact and do some things uh, from there. So definitely a good group uh, from what we're seeing and uh, really excited to kind of see what all those guys can put together. Coach, we enjoy talking about the offensive line here and, and definitely giving them an opportunity to be mentioned in a preview. And, and you have a, a strong offensive line coming back, uh, led by a couple of players that have been able to uh, not only get all conference honors, but uh, you have some experience, a couple of seniors coming back in Gabe and Will Dowling. Yeah, Gabe and Will Dowling, both uh, all-conference guys as well as academic all-district guys. Both guys want to be teachers and coaches. Uh, really do, you know, just a phenomenal job with their technique. And, uh, you know, it's really cool having twins out there. They look they, – when they first came in, it was hard for me to tell the difference. I've definitely figured it out since then. Uh, but Gabe and Will definitely have really done – they played since they were freshmen for us, and so we're excited to have them returning. Uh, Colin Bryce is a, another guy who will be, I think, starting for his third season at center for us, will be a senior. And then we also have Devin Reuter, who's going to be in his fifth year uh, on the offensive line for us, who started last year, as well as Jake Gazinski. So uh, we did lose one starter all-conference at left guard last year, but we got quite a few guys returning, and a really, we think a really good group um, of guys to challenge those guys as well. Uh, with the guys coming in. We're speaking now with Joshua Schumacher here on Midwest Sportsnet. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Please continue to enjoy the videos here as we preview the 2023 college football season. Let's go from one line and flip the script and talk about the defensive line. Who's coming back for you there? Yeah, defensive line, you know, we really have a lot of experience coming back at defensive end. Uh, we have some rotational guys that are coming back on the interior, but we're definitely led – uh, by Marv Dupree. Uh, he was a guy that uh, really kind of can get a lot of havoc, a lot of tackles for a loss. He ended up starting for us as a freshman um, when uh, another guy named DeMonte Bean ended up tearing his ACL. And uh, so we're excited about DeMonte as well. Uh, David Cagle is another guy that's uh, really been a really good utility guy for us that can, he's really developed his pass rush skills and uh, excited about him. Uh, Logan Narwald on the inside, he's going to be a junior guy that's worked really hard this summer, uh, really worked to lead guys as well in that group. And then uh, Gene Richmond, who's a sophomore, who's uh, driving up tomorrow from Georgia. We're excited about the work Gene's been putting in at home this summer. And there's a you know a couple other guys that we're excited to see, but we're definitely going to have a few young guys on the inside and uh, excited. But we're, you know, we've had some young guys start for us in the past and they've become really good players. So Excited to see what these guys will do. Coach, when looking at the statistics from 2022, your top three in by way of tackles were all linebackers last season. That includes Casey Roush. Uh, how big is that? That uh, I mean, the, the guys who are getting the most tackles are the guys you probably want to get the most tackles right there, uh, heading toward that line and, and uh, not letting things get past them. Yeah, Casey is back for his uh, four seasons, so he's going to be a four-time starter at uh, Mike as well as he's an All-American punter. He, you know, he's a phenomenal athlete. We actually were struggling kicking field goals, and I think the last three or four games of the season last year, he stepped in and kicked field goals. You know, his big question for us was like, "Hey, can I just have two things to focus on next year?" <laughs> so uh, we are excited. We, you know, we got four freshman kickers coming in, going to compete. Uh, but Casey's a uh, he knows our defense in and out. He's very smart. He's a nursing major. And uh, when he stepped in as a freshman, uh, we played in the spring. He was playing next to uh, some veteran guys, a guy named Hunter Maynard and Aaron Rod, guys that really kind of – and it, it fit their skill set best for Casey to be in the middle and be the mic. And uh, so they would kind of question him sometimes on some of his calls and help him out. But then he ended up, you know, really knowing it really well. So he got to play with those guys for two years and win two conference championships with those guys. And then Hunter Maynard's younger brother uh, came in 
as a freshman last year, ended up uh, starting for us by week two at the same position his older brother played for. And uh, so he really kind of just really got better as the season went on. And then at Will Linebacker, you know, we played Evan Pittenger, who's coming back, as well as uh, Liam Carey. And Liam ended up leading us in tackles, but Liam didn't even start till the fourth week of the season. So we do think we have a special group of linebackers. And um, so we're really excited about those guys coming back. Uh, I think a little bit for us, you know, that was definitely a little bit of a learning curve because there's a lot to learn as linebackers in our defense. But, uh, yeah, we're really excited. That's the group I get a coach too. So I'm blessed to have some guys as well as the guys behind them that uh, do a really good job. Well, then I'm sure that is a, a special thing when they're lighting it up statistically and, and uh, the area that, you, <laughs> that you're focusing on. I'm sure that is something that's great. Coach, From uh, we, we continue on in the defense a little bit further. Defensive back, we'll talk about the secondaries. Colby Comisher coming back as well, had four interceptions for you. Yeah, Colby, you know, Colby's a guy that, uh, you know, Coach Traz recruited. He actually led the state of Michigan in passing his senior high school. Uh, he's a great athlete, tremendous worker. Um, you know, played special teams as a freshman, you know, got in some packages as a sophomore, ended up winning a starting job as a junior, got multiple interceptions, um, and really just, you know, worked his way into it. So it's it was it's really cool when you kind of tell a recruit kind of this is what the progression we think can be, and then kind of see it all unfold that same way. And it's due to his, you know, it's due to his work and all the things that he's put in uh, to it. And so excited to have him back. Um, and then uh, Gabe Whitmore, who's a guy that was injured a little bit last season, uh, who started for us uh, actually as a freshman the first time. We had Casey Roush actually was ejected from a game, and we kind of moved around some seniors and all-conference players so Gabe could play because we felt like he was the best, next best guy to go out there. And he ended up being the defense player of the week that week. So definitely felt good about that. So uh, Gabe's been uh, getting after it. And we're excited about uh, him coming back as well. And then another guy who's a really great leader on our team is Andrew Weimer. And so sometimes on third down, we'll play a three safety package. And Weimer has also uh, rotated in, in at safety spot as well. He's a he's a phenomenal guy, wants to be a football coach uh, when he's done. And so really provides a lot of leadership for us as well as, you know, he's a great tackler and he gets the ball. So in the time he gets out there, he's, he's a ball magnet and uh, gets after it. So. Definitely excited about the safeties we have returning. Uh, you know, our corner group, we graduated three seniors last year. Uh, so, you know, it's always great to have those, you know, three seniors competing and playing. But at the same time, you know, you got to say goodbye to them and ready for the next guys coming in. So uh, there's there's a good mix and a good uh, battle for uh, corner. So we're excited to see what those guys will do. I'm enjoying listening, Coach, as you're talking about all these players that, that might want to have coaching in their future. I mean, from a uh, perspective of at least players, your coaching tree has the potential to be pretty strong uh, if if all of these young men go from there. And I'm, I know they've learned a lot from you. We talk about special teams too, and, and it's easy to do that because we've already talked about special teams. You're talking about a bunch of freshman kickers coming in, Roush uh, with the opportunity to punt again, I'm sure, and DeGainer, who was an All-American because of what he did uh, returning the ball, we've already mentioned those as well. What a category to already have. It seems like a lot of things in place. Yeah, it, you know, we – Coach Straz, you know, when I first became head coach, he had a couple of the special teams, and he did such a great job with it. Kind of ended up handing up over more special teams to him. And, uh, you know, it's a it's such an awesome part to have, you know, you got offense and defensive guys working together on it. Uh, they really buy into what we're doing uh, on the special teams. And so to have some talented guys, though, that really can, you know, take a great group and really push it to be in some of the better units in the country, that part's really exciting uh, for it. So, yeah, we are excited to have uh, Casey back punting. He's phenomenal. Like, he can boom the ball. He's a lefty, which I think is unique, um, as well as he can pin that ball down there like, better than anyone I've ever seen. Like he's phenomenal at it. You know, our on Tuesday we got through, you know, different scouts coming out from the NFL to see him uh, punt that way. And the fact that like he's such a competitor at being our Mike linebacker too. So definitely exciting about what Casey's been able to do. And then uh, you know, you know, at the kicker spot, you know, we're gonna put him in tough situations so we can figure out um who can be our guy. Last year we had uh, a guy struggle a little bit and then another in new kicker um, get injured. 
And so that was kind of our, we had a few issues with being able to kick and felt like we caught, probably could have either tied a game up, won a game or two if we were a little bit better in the kicking game last year. So that's definitely going to be a point of emphasis in the field goals uh, in terms of what we're doing and prepping our team to uh, be ready to go in that area to handle pressure situations. Because when we won our conference championships, we won a lot off of made field goals and then missed field goals. So definitely really important. Coach Camp, just right around the corner. I know we're heading into the weekend right now, and uh, camp getting started for you all next week, and then September second, the first game of the season, as you all will be at home and hosting Taylor in that game, a, a league matchup, and then uh, the following couple of weeks on the road at Olivet Nazarene. They're under new management there, and then the following is Judson back at home once again. Can you take us through the opening of your schedule? Yeah, our eyes are fixed on Taylor. You know, that was a game uh, that we dropped last year at their place. A uh, game, you know, talking about not having a kicker. We went for it on fourth down. We were in the red zone uh, versus being taking an attempt to tie it up. Uh, so, yeah, we're excited, you know, to have a conference game at home. It's been a long time since we've been at home for our first game. We've really been on the road uh, playing some Division Two or FCS schools for the first game of the year. So we're excited for that game. Kind of all our eyes are focused on – us taking care of business and then prepping for Taylor for that first game. So then we'll be on the road um, for, or we're on the road against Olivet, uh, home again against Judson. Those are crossover teams in our league. And then uh, we have a bye, I believe. And then we have Wayne State. So uh, we'll play Wayne State under the lights. And then the next week we get back into our conference. So we play Taylor and then have kind of like a four week hiatus from our conference games. And then uh, we'll play at Lawrence Tech under the lights again. So we have the back to back night games uh, in Detroit or near Detroit. And then really kind of close out with a great schedule of a lot of really good teams. So that's Should kind of. Yeah, excuse me, Coach. Should be a lot of fun in, in, in the Mid-States once again. And I know that you all are looking to make your mark. Coming in on a three-game win streak, turning things around as the season went on, 2023 just ahead. Coach Joshua Schumacher, thank you so much for taking time with us today. And we will continue to follow the Cardinals. And we look forward to you also success to you this season. Thank you very much.